All right, y'all. So I know I made a video already talking about my equipment that I use, my YouTube setup, but I thought I'd do another one that was a little bit more in depth that talked about why I like these products that I use and why I chose the products that I chose. By the way, everything can be found in chasmingsfavoritethings.com. It will also be in the description below. Just go to camera gear. All right, let's kick it off. All right, so first things first, let's start with a little advice. My personal advice to the average YouTuber, someone get looking to get started, you don't need all of this equipment. And I know you see that and hear that all the time, but you truly honestly don't need it to get started. When I say that, I mean, don't wait to get the footage to get started, get started. And then as you get the money, your budget increases, purchase the items that you need to. But all you need right off that is your phone. You can record with your phone. Your phone has audio. If you go to my beginning videos, I used to always record my audio audio with my phone before I had a microphone. Even though I was using a camera, I was doing the audio with this. So it does not sound bad at all. You can definitely record it with your phone. I would say do that versus stopping and waiting for all this equipment. So if you are ready to invest in audio, let's start with that. First thing is my mic that is right above me. It is the Movo mic. It's $39. I was deciding between that and the Rode mic, which is way more expensive. And as you see, this is literally what I'm recording on right now. It's perfect, it works fine. Like this this is legit. So $39, the mobile mic. I chose this because it was budget friendly and I also watched a ton of videos at the time. Thankfully, shout out to all the people who did the videos where they were comparing it to the Rode mic. They were doing the sound and the audio with it. Thankfully, this one guy even took the mic outside. He did it with wind. And this is just a like legit good mic. I've had this for over a year now. It's lasting long, budget friendly. I highly recommend it. The next thing, which I absolutely love, I talk about it all the time, is my GVM light. I am shooting it right now. Shooting with that light in the nighttime, it is, I don't even wanna tell you what time it is. It's the AM actually, like <laughs> while it's still dark outside. I am shooting right now and it is very nicely lit as you can see. The one thing I will say is you can only get it lit like this to look like daylight if you're shooting with a professional camera. If you're trying to do that with your phone, it's not gonna look as lit because you don't have all of the different functions that a camera like the professional ones do have, which you're able to change your ISO, shutter speed, f-stop, like, all of those things affect the light that is coming into the camera and will create this type of scene in addition to having that beautiful GVM light. And you know what? Another reason why I love that light is because the soft box is legit. Like if you're a woman and you know, you don't want like a harsh light on you, you want to look nice. That light is legit. The soft box does that. And then the last reason why I love it is because it looks so good that you can just leave it out in your space. And for me personally, once again, going back to the theme of convenience, for me, leaving that light out, that's one less step for me to do and makes me more likely to shoot more videos because if everything was like a task and a chore, you would not be seeing these videos, y'all. Here's a video that I made with more information about that light in case you wanna check it out. Okay, this one is a basic headphones. It doesn't matter the brand, you can get any headphones. If you have a professional camera, which I have a DSLR camera, mirrorless, you can connect the headphones to it. Or actually, not all of them maybe can connect headphones to, but mine can. And I'll get into that camera in a second. But you need this if you're doing a professional microphone because you want to hear yourself and test and make sure that the audio is coming through. So I highly recommend getting a camera where you can plug the audio into it and where you can plug the headphones into it. It just makes your life easier, trust me. Like you can definitely record, record the audio separately, but what happens if it doesn't record, huh? Now you just wasted all your time. And once again, what's the theme? Convenient. All right, the next thing is my camera, right? We said we we're gonna talk about that. So I have the Canon A7C. I think I was deciding between the A7 and like there's something else that's above that that was more expensive. But this A7C like is legit, it does it. So if you wanna know why I chose the Sony camera, I'm literally gonna read down a list of notes that I kept here about why I wanted this camera. <laughs> it was important for me to upgrade to a new camera, I will say that because with my old camera, we had reached a point, it was a Canon 7D, we had reached a point where I was no longer able to sync accessories to them. I couldn't purchase any more accessories. They were no longer making things for that camera. I chose this Sony camera because one, I like the fact that you could customize the menu. There's a button that you could press to find whatever it is you're usually going to. That's helpful for me. So if like, I'm often formatting the card, right? To clear it. I'm often changing the frames per second. I'm often changing the coloring and things like that. And so I was able to create a custom menu that has all the things that I usually go to so I can just have a quicker situation and 
I don't have to remember like, oh, what is this? What is that? What is this? Because cameras are not my first thing. Remember, I'm a producer. I'm just learning cameras now. I also like the fact that it had the selfie monitor so that I could see myself. That was great. And I can flip the monitor and turn it around or I can flip it and I could see it from this end if I wanted to watch it through there. I just use my laptop because it's a bigger screen. I can more clearly see myself and not have any surprises like makeup surprises and things like that when I download or upload the footage. It was very important to me to have a camera that had autofocus, which most cameras do now, but that was very important to me. So it was important for me to have a camera that I could grow into. This one has 4K and 120 frames per second. I don't know what the upcoming years have in store, you know? So like while we're slowly but surely moving into 4K, I don't know if a big brand partner is gonna want 4K footage. So I wanted to make sure that I had a camera that I could grow into. You can transfer things via Wi-Fi. That was important to me. I really wanted a headphone jack and to be able to adjust my levels on the camera. And yeah, those were the main things and reasons why I chose this camera. So just a little information in case you're thinking about or considering purchasing it. My lens. All right, so this is the lens that I have. I love this lens, specifically this line, this G line of Sony, because it has that button on the side of it that almost turns it into two lenses in one. Now it is a little pricey. I don't think that you necessarily need a lens that has a 1.4 f-stop. That's what mine has. And for those of you who don't know what f-stop is or means it creates that blur in the background basically <laughs> that everyone loves seeing and everyone loves having but i never and very rarely kick it all the way up to 1.4 i think you'd be good with like a 2.0 f-stop or something like that and save your money but with the button that i mentioned on the side so what happens is you have your wider shot this is a 20 millimeter lens and then when you click the button it makes it or converts it to a 35 millimeter lens so now we have a tighter frame wider frame to tighter frame. So that's what I mean when I say it creates almost like a two in one lens. And this is a prime lens, so it doesn't have zoom effect. I specifically chose to go with a prime lens because it gives me crisper footage. It's just the look, I guess, cinematically that I'm going for. I knew that there were other things that I'd want to shoot with it. And this lens just overall allows me to do that. If you need a little more detail on the difference between prime lenses and zoom lenses or benefits, I would definitely tell you to look into that more but know that if you're getting a prime lens, you are not going to be able to zoom. You're literally going to have to move closer to your subject, okay? But it's worth it sometimes, depending on the type of footage you wanna get. Because if you want that super clean, crisp footage, prime lenses can usually give you that. And honestly, that's it, that's my setup. Like I said, it's all about convenience. I mean, in addition to the tripods, right, that I have, and being able to connect this camera to my laptop so that it can act as a monitor, that's another reason why we needed like a newer camera. That's it, it's three things. Well, maybe four if we include the computer. It's the light, it's the camera, it's the sound, and the computer. And that's what I need. I needed things to be as simple as possible. I didn't want two lights or three lights. I didn't want to have to like sync the sound after. Like I wanted to be super simple because I know myself. And if things are more convenient, then I am more likely to do them, follow through with them, and produce even more content for you guys. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you liked that video, I've got much more on production right here.